most of Tsushima aroused my interest at the moment it was first shown, and later presentations increased my interest even more. It seemed to be just that kind of game I like to play. Because of that, it became my most anticipated game. But will it be able to meet my expectations? Fortunately, I didn't have to be disappointed. It's a really amazing game, and I enjoyed it from the beginning to the end. This long-awaited PlayStation exclusive is created by Seattle-based studio Sucker Punch Productions, known for Sly Cooper and the infamous game series. The game is heavily inspired by some of the most iconic works within the samurai cinema genre, and you can choose between English and the Japanese language, and bigger fans can experience the game in black and white as though it was a 1950s samurai movie. At this point, I had to face my first important choice, English or Japanese. After some discussing with my friend and my younger son, both of them thought that this is a silly question. Of course, Japanese. I decided in favor of the Japanese language with English subtitles. Later, as reading the subtitles required a lot more attention, I switched to English for a while. By this point, I had already gotten used to Japanese so much that English seemed very foreign and strange. So, I switched back to Japanese. Ghost of Tsushima is set in the year 1274 in Japan, where tens of thousands of Mongols soldiers invade the island of Tsushima. You play as Ying Saki, one of the few samurai still alive after the massacre. Ying must put aside the century-old samurai code of honor and use the shadows as one of his greatest assets to push back the Mongol invaders. As Ying Saki, you can choose your tactics how you want to play the game, except for some story missions where you need to use the tools and tactics required by the mission. But otherwise, you are free to play the way you like. You can sneak around and kill your enemies behind like a true assassin. You can use a bow, you do have two of them, to ensure chaos in the ranks of enemies. Or look directly in your enemy's eyes and fight them like a true samurai. So you can enjoy your sword fights. In the case of the latter, of course, the patience of the samurai is also required to wait for the right moment to attack the opponent or to block or dodge the opponent's blows at the right moment. Rushing and waving a sword does not work, well, especially if there are more opponents. At this point, I'd recommend killing archers first to avoid getting some arrows in your back in the middle of a battle. If there are too many opponents and they tend to do better than you, you can use items like the kunai bombs, a flaming sword, poison darts, etc. In the case of bigger or more skilled opponents, let's call them bosses, the tactics and tricks of the assassin cannot be used and you have to deal with them. Fortunately, over time you will become stronger and more skilled, and you will be able to unlock different types of skills, and some of them can be used in boss fights. With some planning, the bosses have a little chance to stand up against you, but beware, one or two small mistakes, or going into a boss battle in a beaten state may cost you a life. There are also different types of armor that come with different traits. You'll probably end up like me and change your gear according to the situation to use all the necessary bonuses. 
but when exploring the world and searching for different things, I used traveler clothes. When I was sneaking around and killing enemies as an assassin, I used different but more suitable clothes. For duels or fight, I used a different sort of armor. Also, there are all kinds of cosmetic stuff, headgear, masks, and different dyes for your bows and other equipment, etc., which help you make your character more personal to you. The Ghost of Tsushima story is fantastic and tells the story of samurai, their honor, beliefs, family relationships, friends, loyalty, betrayal, failure, changes, and difficult decisions. It is a deep, great story and it was enjoyable to watch the characters and the development of their relationships with each other. わしの槍をかわし、すかさず切り返してみよう。よし、その息だ。よいか、かわしたらすぐさま攻めろ。わしがついたら避けるのだ。in addition to the main story, the game also offers you a variety of side stories that are just as enjoyable as the main story, and help you better understand this era, world, culture, and what is happening there. At this point, I suggest you look around, explore the world, and do different stories, before moving on with the main story, or moving on to the next part of the island. The island is divided into three parts, the south, the central, and the north. Also, these stories offer you different skills, equipment, and other things. If you only play the main story, you will miss a huge part of the game. Playing only the main story in Ghost of Tsushima is like buying ice cream with chocolate glaze and eating only the chocolate glaze. It took me over 60 hours to finish the game. In addition to the main story, I did all the side stories. Well, maybe not all of them. One of them is broken, but this will hopefully be fixed. I unlocked all the skills, liberated all three parts of the island, visited all the marked locations, and collected most of the stuff. By focusing only on the main story, you could probably finish the game within 25-30 hours. But as I mentioned before, that way you would miss a large part of the game. In open world games, repetitive missions are often a big issue. I can reassure you here, all these stories are different and unique. None of them were repetitive. Only repetitive things in the game were visits to the altar and stuff like that, but there were so little of them that that did not become annoying. And you can do these things between stories. Of course, if you're not interested in discovering new places or collecting new stuff, you can just ignore these activities altogether. <laughs> About the graphics, you shouldn't expect graphics from games like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Detroit Become Human, but the, the graphics aren't that bad here either. If you don't look too close into the details, the overall visuals are beautiful and enjoyable. Enjoyable enough that if you have climbed to the top of a hill or a lighthouse, it is honestly worth taking a moment to take a break and enjoy the surroundings. <laughs> In general, it is a completely satisfying game.
but here and there, there are some bugs and some small things to complain about. One such example is that sometimes you need to move around other objects or characters until a button appears and then you can start talking with them or picking the items up. Well, seriously, like why do I still have to see that sort of thing in games today? Also, what happened to all the children and the elderly on the island? Where have they disappeared? The beginning of this year has been quite boring for me when we talk about the games released this year. But finally, I was delighted with a good game this year because Ghost of Tsushima is a great game, which I enjoyed from beginning to end. I haven't played anything as good as Ghost of Tsushima in a long time. If you like action-adventure or role-playing games, especially those that offer a great story, Ghost of Tsushima is exactly the game I would definitely recommend, and it's totally worth the price. However, if you are also a big fan of samurai movies and games, then this should be a good treat for you. So far, Ghost of is the best game this year.